Hello again everyone, how are you all? Hope everyone is well, as well as you can be with this uh, lockdown mark tip. But uh, yeah, I've seen YouTubers making more content now, obviously people are at home. Um, me as a support worker, I am still going to work and back, but I've probably got a lot more free time on my hands. Um, so I'm going to make a video today, not that we can go out, I, I don't have any pickups uh, from the last video, I've still got to send that one back to CX. Um, but I want to just talk about the actual GameCube itself and my history of it, why, why I really like the GameCube. And yes, it wasn't the most powerful system. Not by a long way. And if you look at it like games on the PlayStation 2 compared to like the uh, the GameCube, they're a lot simpler. They really are. The, the graphics are not as sharp. There's features missing. But, I mean, if you look, the um, it's up top there. I've got the GX4000, actually. Maybe not be able to see it. It's above the Mega Drive. Um, I've got a Philips CDI. And what makes them precious to me is not that they were amazing systems because they weren't the GX4000 is a well-known um, complete flop the Philips CDI was overpriced um, failed to deliver what it wanted to deliver and just sort of like go down history now it's, it's more of a, a joke system but I still really really enjoy those systems because they're nostalgic to me they're part of my gaming history they're um, I, I said I got that one for Christmas the one year and we played it to death the CDI is one that we got from a car boot. And I have fond memories of only having the games that it came with um, and trying to find new games for it, but, and nowhere would sell them. Remember getting them with Dad's car, um, driving to different game shops and going in, so have you got any CDI games? And getting this look of like, what? What are you on about? Um, but they mean a lot to me. And that's where the GameCube is. Um, I'll start off with this one here. And this is my original GameCube, right? And the reason why this means a lot to me is because this is the first console that I bought when I got my own wages. Um, we had systems before that. We had Spectrums, we had Amigas. Um, I remember saving up my brothers and getting the PlayStation 1, and I've got fond memories of them. I really have. But they were shared, you know? I've got five brothers, and you can imagine what it's like in our house. Five brothers, one PlayStation, you didn't really get time on it, you know, uh, the same as like the Amiga and the Celestia extent the Spectrum. Um, so when I got my own, my own place, when I got my own job and money, I remember walking into game and buying this GameCube. Um, I got it as a bundle, I think it came with this carry case, which I have, I've shown off in the past, and uh, it's still got some of my games and everything still in it. And this actual GameCube not only is it the the first console I got with my own money, but this is also what got me back into retro gaming. This is what made me really appreciate retro games now. Um, because I just found it in a box down in the cellar and I was like, oh, I've got to remember that. And then the game was still in this case. Um, and I also found my my original pad. You see, I don't know if you can make it out, but this has got some hell of a lot of use in it. You can see how shiny that is. Um, this pad, it's the only GameCube pad I've ever seen, if you can hear that. It's actually got a rattly, God, I didn't realise how actually gunky that is up in there. I haven't used this one for a long time. Um, it's actually got a loose thumbstick. Oh, the hours I put into playing on this, and when other people come around, and uh, my mate Pod will vouch for this. This was my pad. Nobody touched this pad. This is my pad. Um, but yeah, the, the the memories of it. It's you, you 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 can't you can't recreate that. You know that's what gives people nostalgia for systems. Um, I don't have nostalgia for Nintendo for the Nintendo uh, Super Nintendo or the NES or even the Mega Drive and the Master System. But I can get why people have that passion over certain systems. And for me, as late as it is in the life, is the GameCube. As you can see it's on there. There's a sticker. 
uh, and that sticker will never be removed because that sticker was put on by at the time my girlfriend put that on there she's now my wife we've been married 12 years just gone um, got married on Halloween so that said the memories even to that sticker um, this memory card which is also in it still has my original saves on it for some of the games that I used to play um, so yeah that's where the passion the love for a system comes from and from that and from getting me back into retro gaming um, my GameCube collection has kind of uh, it's quite a grown. I, I wasn't going for a full set. I just realised one day, oh, I've got about like 30 odd games. Maybe I'll go and buy a couple more. And then it sort of snowballs and you end up buying games that you probably never played and games that you probably never will play. But one thing Nintendo is good for um, is making their console variants. I mean, they did it really well with the uh, N64. I mean, the amount of different colours of pads and consoles and um, the Pikachu ones and stuff like lots of different variations which followed on with the GameCube um, So I've got a couple here, which these are the ones I have in my collection. There's an awful lot more. There's the um, What's that one? The Panasonic Q uh, I think that's what it's called bloody expensive to get now. I'd, I'd really like to own one um, But for the money they go for now, it's like do I buy that or do I pay my rent <laughs> you know so that one unless I find a really good bargain somewhere or find a broken one and get it fixed up I think that will be really out of my price range the same as you can get some of the really rare like one-offs like different painters like MTV did some as well but the actual standard ones um, come um, in various different colours some colours that we got here in this country um, others we didn't only came out in Japan so I've got a couple here that I'll go through. Uh, this one here is, forgive me, I am colour blind, but I'm just going to say blue. Uh, no, it's probably not blue. And you're going to correct me in the comments, please do. Um, I think actually, yeah, this one is, oh, you ain't going to see it on there. The writing is an actual Japanese one. Um, yeah. See the right on the back. That, that's this is an actual Japanese one. I'm I'm sure this one's modded. It's not one that I actually use, but this is one that I needed to get just to to add into the collection of different coloured consoles. Um, so yeah, you've got like this one, which also has the matching pad. Oh, a bit of actual story. This pad. My brother found this one in his shed, and I, I think I put a picture up on one of the Facebook groups. Uh, and this was so. It's never been used. The person who bought this. Um, GameCube and this pad said they played it like once or twice and didn't like it and just put it in the shed and my brother found it last year and it looked like it was furry there was that much dust on it but it's preserved it really really well I do like this pad so yeah that's quite common this country is the same as the black one although even though this is a modded Japanese one uh, and also in this country as well I'm sure it was yeah, no, this is a UK one, uh, and that's the Silver GameCube. Uh, they also had the Silver Resident Evil one as well. I think it had like a different um, bit of artwork on the top here. The good thing with these is if you go to underneath, if I remember how to do this, ah, oh, this this side. There it is. That's it. It's been a long time since I've. I to get one of these out. There it is. Uh, these actually uh, come out and you could get different designs that go into the top, which you could just get. But the Resident Evil one came with the Resident Evil, one of these already in it. Um, I have seen people do replacements of these and there's one that's got a dolphin on it, which uh, if you know your history of the actual um, GameCube, dolphin was the, um, the name they were calling it like in... Um, in testing, if you know what I mean, it was the it was called the Dolphin, not the GameCube, uh, which I think that's also quite cool. And yeah, so you got the silver one, and again the matching silver pad. So these just look really nice together. This is when you start going into console variations of like buying them just because they're different colours. And Nintendo know exactly what they're doing with that. They really do. Um, got a going to two 
more Japanese ones now. I'm not sure. I really don't think this one came out in the UK. But again, you're going to correct me if I'm wrong. Um, and this is the... Oh, light's going to shine off that one. The pearl white one. Uh, and it's actually really quite a nice looking console, this one. Um, and the matching pad as well. I'm not sure how well the colours are actually coming across on this camera. And it's really difficult for me to tell being colour blind myself. Um, but yeah, this has got like a really nice shine to it in the right light. It's sort of like, it, it sparkles like a pearl. That's the kind of way you can scratch a pearl white. Um, so yeah, really like this one. Again, another one I don't play, just it sits on the shelf and it looks really nice sitting there as well. And now getting on to one I never thought I'd own, with an attachment I never thought I'd own, because the price of one was shooting off well, a couple of attachments actually on this one. Um, but it's become my daily GameCube. This is one I use whenever I play games now, whether it's on a CRT or a HD HDMI TV. And that is the... Uh, the Spice Orange GameCube, and this absolutely stunning. I love the look of this one. Can't believe I actually own this. And it's also, as you can see on the bottom there, it's got its matching Game Boy player. I cannot believe the prices these Game Boy players are going for. And it's not so much the uh, the attachments on the bottom, the uh, the hardware. It is the disc. Um, I got quite lucky with this because when I was sent the, the Spice Orange GameCube, the, the guy actually sent the disc with it, but it was a loose disc. And, and like two or three days later, somebody just posted up saying, oh, I've got a GameCube Game Boy Player case. Uh, does anyone want it? I think it was like five quid or something like that. It's like, hell yeah, I want that. It goes perfectly on the shelf. Um, and there's that bloody disc. The disc that's always missing or always scratched out. If you're ever going to pick up a Game Boy player for a, the GameCube, make sure you find this first, really, because, or make sure it comes with it, because it's a pain to find. Loose discs alone now, I think, are selling for like 40 to 50 quid, I've seen people asking for and getting. So, so yeah, the Spice Orange GameCube, and again, with the pad, and I really do like this pad. I, I like the colour. It's it's. Then again, I like all the GameCube pads. To, to me, I know people say the PlayStation's best, the, the N64 pads best. Again, because it's what I played a lot, this just feels more natural than any other game pad that I use. And I know it's not for everyone. I can agree. Why the hell's the D-pad all the way down here? I never use that D-pad. Um, the second analog stick is sort of like an afterthought, but. The layout of the buttons at the top here um, was perfect for me, and this analog stick is still the best analog stick I have ever used. It really is. Uh, in addition to this, uh, I also have on the back, you see this little dongle thing sticking out here, and this is the adapter, so I can play this uh, on HDMI TVs. Uh, really nice bit of kit to have. Um, can't read what that says on there, it's too dark. But yeah, that's that came with it, and that's why this is my everyday GameCube. Uh, it's hooked up to, to my TV in the bedroom, and just whenever I want to play, I just switch it on, it automatically comes onto my TV. Love, love this one. Got a nice little nest of GameCubes down there. So that is, I, I own five GameCubes. I know there's a lot of people out there who own a lot more, and I know there's people that own boxed ones. Um, I don't own a boxed one, although there is a story with my original one. Kick myself for this, because when I moved house, as I said, I, I wasn't a gamer at the time. I, I, I was done with this. This was just in a, in a box. forgot about it completely. And when I moved out, I found the actual original box for this behind my sofa. I filled it full of rubbish. I walked outside, and I threw it in a skip absolutely hate myself for doing that because as much as I'd love to get a box back for it it was never it was never going to be this one's box but I'm sure in the past we've all given stuff away thrown stuff out that we look back now going oh why did you do that 
Uh, one more pad now, and this is one that I didn't have until quite recently, and it's a really nice addition, to be honest. Uh, and that is the Wavebird. Uh, if you've never actually played one of these, it, said it, it may look a lot bigger, but it plays exactly the same as the original um, GameCube pad. You, you, your fingers slot perfectly in there. Uh, and the extra size is because you've got to have your two AA batteries in there, which gives it quite a good bit of weight. And if you are ever picking one of these up, I'm sure you know, if you're uh, anything to do with GameCubes or any retro, uh, make sure you get the receiver. Again, like the Game Boy Player, this bit is the bit that's always missing. Although I do think on you on um, eBay now you can buy replacement ones of these, but they're not the same colour. I have seen, and I don't think they're first party ones, I think they're third party ones, um, Spice Orange ones of these. Which would be nice to get, just so I can have it matching. But yeah, love, love that. Um, it feels as responsive as having a wired pad. It really does. A um, couple of other random <laughs> peripherals, you say, is you can't have a GameCube without having some bongos. Um, do you know what? I can't get into the bong the Donkey Kong rhythm games. But the third one where you're using this to get Donkey Kong to run across the um, the platforms and then jump and do all tricks and that, that's actually quite a fun game to play. Uh, I have seen people uh, on YouTube completing like Mario 64 playing just N64 bon uh, GameCube bongos uh, and other games like that. So yeah, you can't have a GameCube without having a pair of bongos. <laughs> just the law. And I've got two of these, but I've only got one with me right now. And this one is the GameCube Arcade Stick. Uh, this is a Logic 3 one. There is a couple of other ones. I don't think Nintendo actually released an official one. But nice clicky joystick. Really, really nice buttons on this. Um, yeah, it's just a very nice thing to have. The good thing with this as well is if you get the 8-bit dough... Um, wireless adapter for the switch you can plug this in and some of these other peripherals uh, and i was playing switch games with this arcade pad which is just for the gamecube which was actually really quite nice playing some proper arcade style games for these. it's quite solid not as solid as um the sega ones when i first picked up one of the sega ones oh, bloody hell there i realized it's got a metal plate on the bottom where are these it's just plastic all around but a good solid addition nice Nice pad. Uh, I do need to get a GameCube steering wheel because I, you know I like my racing games. Um, I'd just like to see if the steering wheel's any good. Again, I don't think there's any like Nintendo ones. I think they're all third party. Uh, right, last bit now before I go. Uh, just a couple of games that are nostalgic to me. Um, that was too long. That was for some other reason. I'll leave them there. Uh, yeah, these are games that whenever I think of the GameCube or when I think back to that original GameCube that I've got with the Polar Bear sticker on, these ones will always stick, stick, stick in my mind. No matter how many GameCube games I buy, I'll always come back to playing these few. Um, and some of these, one, two, well, four of these, I've still got a save state on my original memory card. So um, the first one is SSX3. I'm not going to go into depth in these because I'm sure I've spoke about these before. But it would be rude to do a GameCube video without actually including these. Um, again, this one snuck up on us. I think somebody just randomly bought a disc round. Um, we never had the case for it. And me, my wife, my Pod, we played this for hours. Uh, I'm pretty sure we clocked this game numerous times. But the race modes on it made you just keep coming back and back and back. And the mods and... Um, I think my guy at the end was modded, so uh, he was in a biohazard suit, in a straight jacket, uh, on a hoverboard. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, doesn't take yourself too seriously. Really good soundtrack on this, and absolutely love it. Uh, Simpsons Hit and Run, absolute classic, as I think I've said before. It's Simpsons GTA. Played this to death. Um, you just... It's a real good nod to if you're a South, uh, South Park. Simpsons did it. Um, if you're a Simpsons fan, 
you'll you'll get all the references you'll find all the hidden areas you, you know get up on the monorail and start driving that off the track and mr burns's rocket car and stuff like that classic classic game it gets quite difficult as well towards the end tony hawk's pro skater 4 um didn't complete it on this i'm sure um a mate of mine did but i never did but just just fun yeah you know just absolute Love the soundtrack, love the playing of the game. I still love Tony Hawk's today, that's why I bought it on the PlayStation 4. Um, yeah, just a laugh. Uh, Pikmin, I, this is one that I haven't got a save state for, um, but I know we had a copy of it. I remember playing it to death, uh, but it's one of the games that sadly never, never found again. I've had to rebuy this one. Um, not sure where it went, but pick, pick me an absolute classic game. So my son's about to get the, um, I don't tell him it's for Christmas, um, the Pikmin Deluxe on the Switch. Um, even though he likes these these games over the house, if it's played on a different system, he tends to get not get a bit bored. He, I think he loves the portability of the Switch. You know, the fact that he can just go to a different room and play a proper game. Uh, whereas if I'm playing with these, he's got to be in the living room. He's got to play it on the TV, and I, I think he just gets... You know, he's got to go and go somewhere else. And still, my absolute classic GameCube game of all time. Um, played this again recently with my mate um, Pod and John. Uh, and John had never played um, this game before, Mario Kart. Um, and I said, no, you've got to use the drifts to go around the corners. And after watching me through one lap, he said, do you ever drive straight? You just spend the whole time drifting left, right, going through it. But that's the whole thing about Mario Kart. It's, I love, again, it doesn't take it too seriously. It's nice combat. It's You can you can be leading all the way through and some bastard will throw a blue shell at you. And and then it's like a cascade. You know what I mean? You, you, one person will hit you and you almost at the line and somebody else and somebody else. And then you lose. Uh, um, shiny Thief. The battle modes, the 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 battle modes on these are absolute classic. I love it to death. There's not a thing, and now people are going to say, "Oh, this one's better, that one's better." But to me, for nostalgia, Mario Kart Double Dash will always have a place in my heart, and it's definitely in my top three games of all time. And I say top three just because there's a few of us that I can't. They're probably all the same, you know. What I mean, they're as on a level playing field, but. It is top three. It really is. Absolutely love this game to death. So yeah, that's uh, that's this video really. Um, just this is where it all started, and this is why I love the GameCube. It's not because the games are the best. Um, it, it just isn't. Uh, it, it's stupidly expensive to collect for now, with some of the games and the peripherals and everything else. But I wouldn't have it any other way. This is my system. Uh, I, I've got all the memories and the memories will stay with me forever. That's why we game. You know what I mean? That's why we collect to, to get the nostalgia back, to try and relive the youth, to buy the games we were never able to when we were younger. Um, yeah, it's just, it's it's a nice warm feeling inside when you, when you think about your collection and why you get it. I think that's why when I was getting all this stuff and even if it was all the Spectrum stuff, I didn't have a connection with it. I, I did, but I I was just buying games for the sake of buying games. Uh, and it was like, oh, that's nice. It's all Spectrum stuff. But I don't remember sitting playing them. Where this I do. Um, well, is this going to be the end of my GameCube console collection? I want to say yes, but probably not. <laughs> like most people, you're always looking for that next one. And, oh, I've got five. That's an odd number. I need an even number. <laughs> you know. Silly things we do as collectors. Right, that's enough of me waffling on and getting nostalgic about my favourite system of all time. It really is. Right, anyway, guys, that's enough for me. What's your What's your favourite system? What, do you have many memories with the GameCube? Uh, what What system is you know What What system is your child? What system is that That system to you? That's like, is it Super Nintendo, NES, Sega, stuff like that? Just let me know in the comments below. It's not, it'd be interesting to see what other memories people have got of different systems. Right, that's going to be enough for me. And guys, thanks very much for watching. See you later. Bye.